Aspen University, CJ410 Police Management. My name is Andre Rosedale. I'm the instructor for this course. This is Module 2, Discussion Question 1, which reads, What are your thoughts on the amount of discretion afforded individual police officers while working the streets? Are there hazards, benefits, or both, in your opinion? I look forward to your response with a good APA reference, which can be uh, the textbook or maybe a department policy or manual. Uh, discretion is not universal throughout the country. I know that in the three police departments that I've worked in my 23 year career, it's been different. Um, I know in the small bedroom community that I worked in Hartford County, Connecticut, discretion was uh, encouraged more than not. In the current city that I work in, the small city that I work in, um, discretion is often discouraged, whereas you will at least give out a written warning for uh, traffic crashes that you investigate, uh, which I think it really takes away. I mean, that's a tragic incident for a lot of people, and now you're giving them something that, and a written warning doesn't have a fine in Connecticut, but it it's uh, something that's just kind of piling it on top of uh, this person's this person's tragic event. And... Uh, the person that has ordered us to give out written warnings is saying, well, you know, we're doing this for the insurance company. I don't work for the insurance company. I work for the, uh, the, the businessmen and, and women and the residents and the visitors that come to my small city. I, I work for them. So I think that I should have more discretion on that. So above and beyond the give and take, like uh, I know that some officers are a little give out discretion to their friends or to people that might give them a free sandwich. There's ethics issues about that. Um, I don't know if that's really discretion, but it's called discretion. So getting beyond that, uh, what are the hazards? If you give somebody a break, like let's say they have an unregistered motor vehicle, or they have an uninsured motor vehicle, and you give them a written warning where in the state of Connecticut it says you shall tow their vehicle, but you don't, you let them park it and then you leave, uh, and they get back on that vehicle and they drive down the street and they, they get into an accident, you, that's a hazard. You've created a hazard there because you've allowed that person the ability to uh, continue operating under a um, unregistered or uninsured motor vehicle and now that somebody else is involved, the owner or the operator of the other vehicle that they struck. Just the other day, um, from when I filmed this, uh, I had an incident where I had a shoplifting incident. I found the vehicle. The vehicle wasn't necessarily involved in the shoplifting incident, but the driver of it gave me the information that I needed, and I took his misused plate off the vehicle. It was parked in his driveway, and uh, basically taking away his ability to move the vehicle. Um, and then about two hours later, when I came back to drop my suspect off there, the, the vehicle was already gone. So I had a little discretion because I got a little bit from him for my investigation, but at the same time there was a hazard there because he could have hit somebody else or, um, you know, like what I just said, he could have been involved in a crash or something. Um, hazards, you, you cut somebody loose, you catch them going through somebody's car and you, you catch them loose or you cut them loose from that and say, don't do this. We don't want any car burglaries and he runs off down the street and does it again and then he gets shot. There's a hazard there. What are the benefits? Um, reach out to the community. If uh, you pull a guy over and he is driving his wife's car and didn't realize that it was unregistered or you pull the guy over that's speeding because his wife's having their child in the hospital or you you know, you pull somebody over and he's a 93-year-old World War II veteran and you cut him a break because he's a World War II veteran. I mean, come on. Um, so there's benefits there. You reach out to the community. You let people see your humanity. Um, you get into a car crash and one person's screaming, you know, I want this person ticketed. And the other person's there sobbing her eyes out or his eyes out. And uh, you end up giving him a written warning. And he appreciates that. He sees your, your humanity for that. So those are the benefits to it. It's uh, The hazards are they could recommit the crime or the civil violation if it's traffic. 
and the benefits are it reaches out to the community, it shows your side of humanity, and uh, it also assists in not um, crowding the court systems up during this. I'm filming this during the COVID-19 uh, incident, and courts have shut down the two-week court date, and it's now two months out. Court dates are now two months out. And when all this comes to an end, the court systems are going to be so glutted with cases that if you're discreet here and there, and you know you you hand out a little bit of discretion with not arresting somebody, um, you're going to help the court system and not become glutted. So I look forward to your opinion on this. Uh, what if you are actively in law enforcement? What kind of discretion you like to give out? What kind of discretion you don't like to see? And if you are not in law enforcement, maybe what some kind of discretions that you don't like to see, and what would you like to see more of from law enforcement? Let me know.